Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for this Wednesday, May 13th, 2020. I pray that this time together in God's word is a blessing to you and strengthens your faith in Jesus, our Savior. Our psalm for today is selected verses from Psalm 116. How can I repay the Lord for all the good he has done for me? I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. The death of his faithful ones is valuable in the Lord's sight. Lord, I am indeed your servant. I am your servant, the son of your female servant. You have loosened my bonds. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, within you, Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Yesterday in our Old Testament reading, we heard about some of the festivals that the Lord laid out for his people in his Old Testament church year. Today we're going to read about more of those festivals. Um, and as we read through them, keep in mind that all of these festivals in one way or another pointed the people of Israel ahead to the Savior whom God promised to send. The Lord spoke to Moses, tell the Israelites, in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you are to have a day of complete rest, commemoration, and trumpet blasts, a sacred assembly. You must not do any daily work, but you must present a fire offering to the Lord. The Lord again spoke to Moses, the tenth day of this month is the day of atonement. You are to hold a sacred assembly and practice self-denial. You are to present a fire offering to the Lord. On this particular day, you are not to do any work, for it is a day of atonement to make atonement for yourselves before the Lord your God. If any person does not practice self-denial on this particular day, he is to be cut off from his people. I will destroy among his people anyone who does any work on this same day. You are not to do any work. This is a permanent statute throughout your generations wherever you live. It will be a Sabbath of complete rest for you, and you must practice self-denial. You are to observe your Sabbath from the evening of the ninth day of the month until the following evening. The Lord spoke to Moses, tell the Israelites, the festival of shelters to the Lord begins on the 15th day of the seventh month and continues for seven days. There is to be a sacred assembly on the first day. You are not to do any daily work. You are to present a fire offering to the Lord for seven days. On the eighth day, you are to hold a sacred assembly and present a fire offering to the Lord. It is a solemn gathering. You are not to do any daily work. These are the Lord's appointed times that you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies for presenting fire offerings to the Lord, burnt offerings and grain offerings, sacrifices and drink offerings, each on its designated day. These are in addition to the offerings for the Lord's Sabbath, your gifts, all your vow offerings, and all your freewill offerings that you give to the Lord. You are to celebrate the Lord's festival on the 15th day of the seventh month for seven days after you have gathered the produce of the land. There will be a complete rest on the first day and complete rest on the eighth day. On the first day, you are to take the product of majestic trees, palm fronds, boughs of leafy trees, and willows of the brook, and rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. You are to celebrate it as a festival to the Lord seven days each year. This is a permanent statute for you throughout your generations. Celebrate it in the seventh month. You are to live in shelters for seven days. All the native born of Israel must live in shelters so that your generations may know that I made the Israelites live in shelters when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So Moses declared the Lord's appointed time to the Israelites. Our New Testament reading continues our reading of the Gospel of Luke as Jesus points us ahead to his return and encourages us to be ready for that return at any time. Be ready for service and have your lamps lit. You are to be like people waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can open the door for him at once. 
Blessed will be those servants the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will get ready, have them recline at the table, then come and serve them. If he comes in the middle of the night or even near dawn and finds them alert, blessed are those servants. But know this, if the homeowner had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also be ready, because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Lord, Peter asked, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? The Lord said, who then is the faithful and sensible manager his master will put in charge of his household servants to give them their allotted food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom the master finds doing his job when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming, and starts to beat the male and female servants, and to eat and drink and get drunk, that servant's master will come on a day he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not know. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unfaithful. And that servant who knew his master's will and didn't prepare himself or do it will be severely beaten. But the one who did not know and did what deserved punishment will receive a light beating. From everyone who has been given much, much will be required. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, even more will be expected. I came to bring fire on the earth. How I wish it were already set ablaze. But I have a baptism to undergo and how it consumes me until it is finished. Do you think that I came here to bring peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. As we follow Jesus, as we have heard many times in our daily readings so far, we can expect that we also will suffer, even as Christ himself suffered. The 20th century German theologian Hermann Sasse comments on the hidden glory of God in Christ's passion and what that also means for us. Nowhere is God more deeply covered and hidden than in the passion. Gethsemane and the cry of dereliction on the cross shatter every attempt to twist the gospel into a triumphal epiphany of some savior God in the manner of the ancient mystery religions or into a heroic epic. How often the theology of glory has tried to control the gospel. The miracles have been particularly misunderstood in this way. To be sure, Jesus manifested his glory in them, as we are told in the account of the wedding at Cana. But it says explicitly, his disciples believed in him. Not the wedding guests, nor the 5,000 whom he fed, nor the sick whom he healed, nor even those whom he raised from the dead believed in him. Also, these deeds were both a revealing and a covering of his divine majesty. Only in faith did his disciples see his glory. His resurrection also was no demonstration for the world. The empty grave as such convinced no one who did not believe in him. It could be explained away, as were also his miracles of healing. Faith always deals with what is hidden. Also the faith of the apostles and of the apostolic church that Jesus is Lord was, was faith in his hidden glory, in God veiled in the flesh, in the true God in the form of true manhood. Nowhere, however, is this hiddenness more profound than in the cross. Our hymn for today is the first stanza of the hymn, The Bridegroom Soon Will Call Us. The bridegroom soon will call us, come to the wedding feast. May slumber not befall us, nor watchfulness decrease. May all our lamps be burning with oil enough and more, that we, with him returning, may find an open door. And we pray, merciful Lord, cleanse and defend your church by the sacrifice of Christ, united with him in holy baptism. Give us grace to receive with thanksgiving the fruits of his redeeming work and daily follow in his way. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
and the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you again so much for spending this time with God's word with me. God's richest blessings go with you today, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.